Hello and welcome to From the Roots Up, where we're building our little homestead from the roots up, right here in central Oklahoma, uh, where the wind comes sweeping down the plains, and today it is sweeping. I couldn't find the off switch anywhere, so I'm just going to have to record while the wind is blowing. I apologize for the noise, and uh, maybe I can go back and do some voiceover later to make this less painful for you. So I got some IBC totes, some of the big cube totes, 275 gallons that I had for uh, some different projects. But one of the first things that I did, I've never worked with them before. One of the first things that I did was I just took it all the way apart. I wanted to see um, how they broke down. So I want to show you real fast. Um, what it looks like when you take it almost all the way apart. Um, here is the pallet that is on the bottom, the cage that goes around it, and then the plastic bladder. So you'll notice the cage, uh, there are bolt holes right around the bottom. There's a, an opening here that matches up with the opening here. I took the bolts out to take the cage off and then I put them back in so that this piece would stay together. Uh, you could disassemble this further. There's a frame around the bottom. There's spacers. This one is plastic. Some of these spacers are aluminum. Um, this piece in the middle, this support piece, is a separate piece that comes out. And if you want to take it all the way apart, it's the same nine bolts that hold the cage on plus just two more right behind the, the spout output but what you end up with is um, basically a pallet that i'll use for something else the cage that we're going to see today the bladder and then on top of the bladder there are these two arms let me come this way a little bit they go through the loops on the bladder and it's like this one then they bolt down on top of the cage and that makes sure the bladder uh, can't bounce out, slide out if it's laying on its side, kind of contains everything together. So as I was looking at this structure, it occurred to me that these are the perfect ingredients for a small, light, easy to move around chicken tractor. Now, at very first, I was looking at it from this direction. These are 40 inches wide by 48 inches deep. And I was thinking if I cut it right down the middle here and on the other side, then I would have this half shell that I could lay down. I have two sides, I lay them down side by side and have one long um, cage to use. But um, the reason I was going this direction is because it would be wider and shorter. But a chicken tractor, I'm not concerned about it being tall. I want more square footage, more surface area. Um, but the difference is gonna be subtle. But what it occurred to me is if I do that, I will lose the use of these because they don't fit going that direction. And, uh, and I could use the extra support on one side. You'll see in a minute. Also, if I cut it right down the middle, I would have to deal with the spout, the opening for the spout, the lid I'll have to deal with either direction, but I would have to cut these tabs off first. So as I looked at it, it dawned on me that going this direction is actually going to be better. I'll lose a little bit of surface area, but it's gonna make this whole project um, quite a bit easier. So what I'm going to do is instead of cutting in the very middle, I'm gonna cut right along the edge of this beam on both sides. That way I've got a flat piece to sit on the ground, okay, on both sides. And then we're gonna take the bladder. I'm just gonna use one of the cages as a form Turn the bladder over on its side, lay the cage on top of it, draw some lines so I can cut out part of the bladder to be a shelter, um, provide rain protection, and you can just watch me either succeed or fail. Uh, we'll see how this turns out when I'm all done. Well, I thought this was gonna be a fast, easy project on a Sunday afternoon, um, but none of my projects go the way they're supposed to go. We left church and uh, popped the next town over and ran in Home Depot to get a couple of things that you'll see later in the video uh, so that I can mount these cages next to each other and uh, get the, the plastic bladder, part of the plastic bladder mounted inside for a shelter. Uh, rain protection and stuff 
and thought I was doing good ahead of the game. Let's let's stop while we're in town. Let's go by, grab a couple of things. We can eat lunch and uh, just spend the afternoon on a project. And you can see I didn't even get through the first step, cutting the cage. And my cutting wheel on my angle grinder broke. This, by the way, is an important reminder of why we wear safety glasses. If one of those would have come back towards my face, that could have been bad. Fortunately, this time they both just wedged in between the the metal bar that I was cutting. But you don't want stuff like that flying at you. Uh, there's one thing I do know: don't keep cutting with a broken cutting wheel. We've got to just throw that away and start fresh. I probably have some more somewhere, but my shop tools are all still in storage. Um, one of the projects that I'll have to get to later is getting electricity in my shop. I want to get the floor coated with epoxy before I start moving things in there so I don't have to move everything back out when I get around to doing that. So it's going to be a lot faster and easier for me to run back to Home Depot than to go dig through um, the storage building and try to find that. So here we go. This is a, a typical start to one of my projects. Two trips to Home Depot already and I've only put, what, five minutes on the project itself. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I got the cage cut in half. Next, I'm going to figure out where I need to cut the bladder. So uh, if you remember when I was showing before, the cut that I made would have been across here in the center. So this half, will be the piece that I'm using. I'm going to rotate this around. So this does not have the spout coming out. Okay, I'm going to use this is a reference where I need to cut the bladder. Now I'm going to draw, use my Sharpie, and draw a line right across the top edge of this. But to mark the front and the back, I'm just going to slide this back a little bit, take my level, and just lay it in there. That'll hold that nice and snug so I can draw a nice straight line across the back. Then I'll draw the sides, then I'll move my level around to the front. Actually, so the front side of this I want open, so I actually don't need to cut across the front. I need to cut up about here, so I don't need the level for that. I'll use this as a line, as a guide. So here's the general idea. If I can affix that plastic to that frame, the rest of this will support some chicken wire. The two pieces across the top that we're holding the bladder in are gonna screw on down here on this end. And that'll just give me some rigidity uh, right across the very bottom and then one about the middle to um, fix the chicken wire to. And uh, this is it. What you're seeing 
is essentially the end product. Next, I'm going to take these hose clamps. Um, I just guessed, I hope these are big enough. If not, I'll have to make another trip to Home Depot. This is the inch to inch and a half. Uh, I've got six of them, two for each side, two for the top. And uh, I'm just going to clamp these two pieces together. So I've got one solid structure. I hope these are big enough. If not, I'll have to make another trip to Home Depot. If not, I'll have to make another trip to Home Depot. Make another trip to Home Depot. Well, here we are in the car again. Bet you can't guess where I'm going. If you set back to Home Depot for your third trip on this project, then you'd be right. The uh, hose clamps uh, ended up not working. So uh, they might work if I had bigger ones, the inch to inch and a half. I could just barely get the tail of it wrapped around and uh, caught on the screw. Well, as a matter of fact, a couple of them I never could get to catch. The ones that did, uh, even when I got it on there and cinched it down, it didn't really cinched down like I thought it would. Um, granted, that's not what they're for, so I can't really be upset. I just was hoping for the easy win. Um, bigger ones that I could get in there and get snugged up good might still work. The other thing that I almost did, I got some self-tapping sheet metal screws that I'm going to use to screw the uh, bladder, the plastic piece, inside the frame so it's fixed secure it can't slide out you know critters can't pull on it and I thought well hey I'll just use that and run it through and screw the two fortunately this cage I don't know if you noticed I'll get a close-in shot is uh, square aluminum pipe instead of round it's gonna be a lot easier to just run screws into it since I've got a flat surface but the uh, the screws that I got I only needed to go through a sheet of plastic and one square pipe. Here if I'm going to screw them together I need to go through two so I have to have longer screws. So right now what I'm trying to decide is are sheet metal screws the best way to go? I could try larger um, hose clamps. I also could just drill holes straight through and run bolts and nuts and, uh, and tighten them on that way. Um, if I thought that I would need to take this apart to fix it, change it, do things ever, I would do that and put wing nuts on and call it a day. Uh, but in theory, I shouldn't ever have to take this apart again. Maybe just flip it over and clean it or replace some chicken wire if, um, if it gets torn or rusts over time. But the frame I shouldn't have to fool with. So uh, right now I'm leaning towards longer um, sheet metal screws. All right, I actually got a couple of options. Um, I got some longer self-tapping sheet metal screws and um, I've got some of the pieces that I cut off and I'm gonna practice on these and just see what happens. I'm a little concerned uh, the length of these, I have some longer ones too. I got two different sizes. Whoops. Um, I just, I have never worked with aluminum like this. So I don't know what to expect. Um, I know that the tip that is the self tapping part, um, if it goes all the way through, do I need the threads also poking out to get a good hold on both sides? I feel like I do. Um, and if that's the case, this is not quite going to be that long. Um, so instead of putting holes in the actual cage over there, I'm going to try it on these and um, just see what happens. And if it feels like it's a good, firm, snug grip, uh, then maybe I'll go with it. Um, I also got some bigger uh, hose clamps just in case that happens to work. Honestly, right now, I kind of want to just get a roll of duct tape because I probably could wrap around that and duct tape in between each square all the way around and it will probably hold as long as it needs to hold. But uh, let's see if we can figure out a different way to do this. So let's see what happens.
It made it through this first wall just fine. It made a divot in the next one, but I think I think what's happening is I've just ground off the tip of this so it can't keep boring through there. So there's two things going on. Number one, it's not going through one, two, three layers like maybe it should. I don't know if it should. I, I never used these. I don't know how many times that's, if that's only supposed to go through one layer of sheet metal and then go into wood and hold it on, you know. But number two, it doesn't matter because even if I get through that, it's wallowing this hole out so much that it's not gonna stay, it's not gonna hold. So, I think that kind of leaves me with hoping these bigger hose clamps actually do the trick or drilling holes through and then running a nut and a bolt. So let's go back um, and try the larger hose clamp and hope our noisy unit just kicked on beside me here. I hope that that works. Okay, I feel a little justified. The larger hose clamps um, are working the way I originally thought they should. Um, just having them long enough to get a good grip. They're tightening down and actually holding it pretty good. I, it feels sturdy, it feels snug. And so we're gonna stick with this one and uh, see if I can get this ready to be able to put birds in. Okay, I'm gonna cut off some chicken wire here. I think I gave myself plenty. A very unofficial measurement that I just made is going to be enough. Okay, 
the wind may have taken a break for a second until I finish that sentence probably. The idea here is to uh, just line the inside of this with chicken wire. Um, I wanted to, to go back a little past where the bladder um, is going to get screwed in. Just that's going to help hold everything firmly in place. I opted to just do this with uh, zip ties. Right here, because I'm folding it across a three-way corner, uh, there's a big extra piece there. I could uh, cut it all out, but this is like when you're wrapping birthday or Christmas packages, you lap over the corner. You kind of fold it around and get a, uh, a triangle of it doubled up and fold it back on itself. I'm using two of them. And it's fitting just right.
chicken wire, so there's no gap. The uh, because of the way we cut it, the grooves here already line up with the, uh, the cage beams. So what I want to do, the screws that I got are long enough to go through the plastic and go through one of these square pipes. Um, I don't know, let me check actually. It just occurred to me, the same trouble that I had screwing these through those uh, scrap pieces, I'm going to have now, because they are long enough that they're going to hit both sides of the square pipe, uh, not just go in one and stop. So uh, let's see, let me try one, because the difference is the second hole I was trying to hit with the first screw was a double wall, two pipes together. I can make sure that I miss the crossbars. Let's try it and let's see what happens. All right. I've reconfigured my clamp with the piece offset. So I'm going to see if I can drive this through the top and the bottom wall of this pipe and not have it needing to hit a, a double wall down here. Uh, let's just see if it'll go in and stay. I feel like it's gonna do the same thing. By the time I get through that second one, it's gonna wallow this hole out enough that it's not gonna hold, but hopefully I'm wrong. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, it did punch through. The other thing I was worried is that the uh, self-tapping tip was gonna stick out and the threads wouldn't grip. Um, but they reached just far enough, they caught it and they kinda sunk it in and it actually is holding really good. So the only thing there's gonna be an additional thickness of that plastic. Uh, it's not going to cause any problem for it screwing. This is going to give it a longer distance. But I believe, I believe that's actually going to work. I feel confident enough to give it a try. If I mess something up, um, you know, oh well, one one extra hole in that thing won't be the end of the world. So, uh, hey, let's give it a go. did go through, it didn't quite catch the threads on the far end of that, and it's because of the thickness of the plastic. I don't know if I give it a little more, if it'll be able to, no. But this is not extremely structural. Um, as long as that hole's not so loose for it to just fall out, all it has to do is hold this plastic up um, against the top of it. And so if I've got four of these in the center, a couple on each side. Um, I really feel like it's gonna hold just fine.
Okay, I'm going to cut the ends off of these zip ties that I used. Uh, I'm going to flip the whole thing over, and there's a few more zip ties I'm going to put on what's going to be the top when we flip it over, um, just to snug the chicken wire up against the frame all the way around. Um, but that's it. This thing is done. Um, you know, I wasted time because I'm figuring it out as I go. I'll leave in the comments below a list of everything that I actually ended up using and that'll make it quicker and easier uh, for you guys if you want to duplicate this process. Help me out. Leave a comment below. Uh, do you actually like watching me bumble through this process? Because this is the way I do everything. Or would it be better for me? Usually I like to try to figure things out, do one uh, the hard way, and then once I have everything ironed out, do a separate video showing point A to point Z, whatever the end is, um, in a little better order. But uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.